our next set of filters up here are the blur filters. Now these either apply directly or they have their own dialog box. These are, are not in the filter gallery. The average one is kind of interesting. It takes all of the colors in your image and averages those into the average color of all those colors. Notice our, our average color here is kind of a brown, rather, rather ugly brown actually, not, not a very nice brown. Let's just undo that average. That's what that one does. Gives you the average of your images, average of all those color pixels in there. Blur simply blurs the whole picture down a little bit. Sometimes it's very, very hard to see. It depends upon your particular image. Our next one here is Blur More. It does a little more of a blurring effect. Again, a little hard to see that. Notice that these don't have any controls on them. It simply applies that effect directly onto the image. And because of that, I almost never use those two options. Instead, I'll use the Gaussian Blur or the Smart Blur as my main blurring tools if I need to blur because they have you know, far greater controls in there. So I'll look at our Gaussian Blur first. Here is zoomed in. If I click and hold, I can see it before it's blurred. If I let go, I can then see the blurring effect right there. It blurs the whole picture. Now the nice thing about the Gaussian Blur is that I can adjust the amount of blur down here. So if I want just a little bit of blurring, I can actually do that. So I can come in and adjust the amount of blur. So because of that, this Gaussian blur is much better than those other two blur tools. I can go real blurry if I want to. See, it almost takes it up to that averaging effect in there. So you can really blur these things down. You'll find in most cases working down way down towards the bottom edge in here is going to be what you need. Now sometimes you may want to have a larger blur. You may want to have a real blurry effect like that. Maybe you have a cloudy sky and you want to soften out that cloudy sky for whatever it is. Just select out the cloudy sky so it's in its own selection and you can apply these filters inside of a selection. Let me demonstrate that right now while we're talking about that. Just grab my polygonal lasso tool. I'll just do a real fast selection in here around this wagon. Nothing very dramatic. There we go. Just kind of do a fast fast selection there. So that's selected. Let's go up here to our blur and the Gaussian blur. Let's just blur that a whole bunch. And notice how the blurring effect, the filter effect, is only being done inside of your selected area. So you can be very, very specific about what's being blurred and where it's being blurred by doing that in a selection, doing a selection first, and then doing your effect in that selection. And that goes for any of these different filters. You can apply the filter just inside of a selection if you want to. Okay, back to our blurs again. We have the lens blur. And as you can see here, a huge dialog box, lots and lots of options in here. Let's just bring our image down to fit in our view. There we go. Lots of options. And we can do a preview or no preview. See right there. In here we can adjust the iris shape. This is talking about the iris that you would have in a camera. Basically the, the part of the camera that narrows down or increases the amount of light going through the lens. That's called the iris. The little shading effect in there, like, like little shades being brought in. And depending on how many leaves those shades have, that controls the shape of that. And you then can come in and make an adjustment to try to create a blur based upon that lens shape. You can bring in specular highlights if you want to, or allow your specular highlights to happen. You can bring in noise also. This is what's called a uniform noise. It's just off screen, but they have two options, uniform and Gaussian, in there, and a monochromatic on that. So kind of a specialty tool in here, but trying to create kind of a lens blurred effect. Sometimes this is, again, useful if you have an image taken with one camera using film, and you want to 
match that with a different you know, image that was taken using digital. You need to match your digital to your film. Sometimes this tool can help you to match those images together. Okay, back up to our filters and blur. The next two are kind of fun. These are the motion blurs. As I bring this up, you can see how it is blurring it as if there is motion in there. Actually, it blurs the background or blurs your image. And you can even make things look like they're fast. Let me just bring back up our selection. There's the selection. I'm going to invert the selection. Inverse, so the background is now selected. Again, if I was going to be doing this for real, I'd have this you know, very carefully, tightly selected. But this will give you an idea of how this works. Let's do our motion blur. And I'll blur that background up. There you go. It looks as if this wagon is moving very, very quickly across that background because the background is blurred and the wagon is clean. This works out real nicely on shots like race car shots. If you do a real, real careful selection around that race car and then blur the background up, it looks like the race car is moving. Of course, you also need to blur the wheels to give them the effect of spinning. And you can use a radial blur on that because, of course, they should be moving as well. So that's the motion blur. Now you can use this motion blur to change the angle of the motion as well. You can see it in there. There's an, a little angle shift. So you can use this for other effects also, not just the blurring effect. And in here, if you click just click preview, there we go. And you can preview or show or hide that. Some of these boxes, if you click in here and hold you get a preview happening in here, but it's not working on this particular dialog box. Also, whenever you see these kinds of dialog boxes, this is fairly old stuff. This is an old filter that's been around for a long time. It uses a simpler dialog box. Okay, let's go over here to Blur and Radio Blur. This allows you to blur things around a center. And this is a real, real old dialog box, as you can see. This one has been around forever. There's no actual preview, but you can get an idea of what it's going to be doing. It's going to be taking your pixels and then smearing them in a circular pattern more of a smear outside and less of a smear inside. You can do spin or you can do a zoom effect. And let's just choose OK. There's a zooming effect. You can see that blurring in towards the middle. Again, interesting little kind of a special effect they might want to use. The problem with that one, of course, as you saw there, is that we don't have any good preview on that. We just have this thing here. See, it's kind of a trial and error technique to get just the right effect on that. Okay, back up to our filters and our blurs. We have a smart blur. Now, smart blur is a real nice one. I'm, just, I'm going to cancel this selection here. Let's just deselect that and bring the smart blur back up again. The smart blur, you can see it happening in there, just a little bit of a blurring effect. It tries to retain hard edges and then blur everything else out. So it's good for cleaning out little problems that you may have, but still keeping it looking like it's a, a sharp image. If I zoom in, let's see if we can find a spot up here. Here we go. See as I click on and off, take a look right in, right in there. That's really showing out well there. So you can see those sharp edges on that metal band. If I click and hold, Without that blur, there's a lot of detail, roughness in there. With the blur, that roughness all smooths out, but that edge is retained. So it's very good at being able to do that. Now the technique here is to come in and adjust the threshold amount. And notice the threshold amount is adjusting my edge in there, and the radius is adjusting how much smoothness is going on. And using these back and forth a little bit, you can get just the right amount of blurring. This is a real nice tool to use if you're trying to clean up an image that has some film grain in it, things like that. You want to kind of try to remove that, make it look a little smoother. This can help you do that by blurring out everything except for the edges. And if you do that and retain those hard edges, your eye looks at that and believes that it's a very, very sharp image, even though there's blurring going on because the eye looks for edges and it judges how sharp something is based upon the edges that it sees. So again, we have that same kind of control. Very, very similar to the Smart Blur. I usually go for the Smart Blur instead of the Surface Blur, but they have a similar 
kind of blurring effect in there. So there we go. That's a look then at those different blur filters. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.